it's us being the new faces of the Republican Party, you know, on the Democrat side, God bless them. But, you know, if, if they can get something together, they at least get legislation pushed and get themselves organized. Um, but for, for me, the new face of the Republican Party have to be people that can identify with the need for us to maintain our faith and to balance that faith against the need for progress and do it inside of a way that really kind of continues to build upon what American greatness has been, which has been the only thing. We're different than any other place in this world. You can drop an American anyway, anywhere, and, and they just kind of get away with not having to deal with the, the caste issues or the, the cultural deference issues or the class issues, and they can just talk to anybody. There's a confidence that comes with being American that really is is unmatched, but is also very necessary in this world right now. Exactly. So, you know, I, I, I think, um, I don't know how long you want to run this, but I mean, I'll give you some closing notes here. Mm -hmm. I think, one, lawmakers should be very judicious in terms of what they listen to care pushing forward. I think, two, American Muslims have an opportunity to to start building new organizations that are wholly American, that allow us to build into the next couple generations of American Muslims and, and provide leadership. I think three, if you're American Muslim and you're listening to this, that you should take a look at you know some of the programs that Noman Ali Khan has, and and just maybe just look into just religious leadership. Um, and if not, you know, we're going to be up and running by spring. So I mean, reach out to me on Twitter. Um, we're not going to have programs until then, but I'm looking for people to help. I'm looking for people to donate. I'm looking for people to work with us. Uh, we're trying to build those programs, and I've got a couple of imams I'm working with here who are all American. We've got some of the only African-American Muslims who, who are always overlooked inside of these conversations that are our part and parcel of the, the community we're trying to create. And, and, and I, would, I would say focus on an understanding that you know, you're not as far apart as you think you are, regardless of where you sit. If you are a person of faith who's Christian or Muslim or Jewish or other, mm -hmm. if you are a secular person who's LGBTQIA, or I'll even say this, I have, you know, a buddy of mine, Benji Irby, he's gay and he adheres to his Christian beliefs and, and he's figured out a way to reconcile it. Um, but I'm, I'm telling you that, that forcing these types of things on American Muslims isn't going to work because we're still reconciling intra-faith, and that's where I'm starting, okay? Will we eventually get to talking about those types of secular issues? Sure, but it's probably going to be three or four years from now. And I've got, you know, I've got gay advisors that we've talked to about, like, how do we actually broach these conversations? How do we do this? Because you cannot take away from the right of people of faith to have their faith and believe their faith the way they want to believe it. In the same way that you shouldn't be telling LGBTQ people to do this, but you have to have an America where in the middle, outside of all of these things, we understand that there's a secular population, and that secular population may look for faith, uh, they may look for more meaning, they mo may look for spirituality, they may look for other things, but we need new organizations, we need new edifices, we need the the opportunity to, to educate, and, and more than anything else, we need community. Because without community, trust me, all this stuff falls apart. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you think there's space for American Muslims, these types of American Muslims, within either the Democratic or Republican Party at this at this point, with the way that both parties are? Well, I'm a Republican district leader in Harlem. I'm a member of the New York um, State Committee. Um, I was on the Trump 16 campaign and had brought imams to talk to Steve Bannon, okay? Um, and I have provided interfaith advisory. And a lot of what I think there, there should be understood is that on the Republican side of the House, things are changing. There is opportunity for people of faith to come in. The Democrats are going to have to balance in between absolute religious secularism, mm -hmm. because that's what it's become, and an opportunity for people of faith to live inside of that house. Um, because you can't demonize people of faith. Um, and you can't, you know, sit here and talk about your, your, your issues when there's persecution of Christians internationally, when there are 
there are, you know, there's genocide happening to Muslims internationally in many different countries and, and just sweep it under the rug. I mean, is it that you only care about the deaths of certain people? You only care about the rights of certain people? Or do you care about everybody? Mm-hmm. And I think that's a challenge that the Democrat Party really has to face head on. With the Republicans, you know, everything is legislated. You know, uh, yeah, of course, we're going to have continual challenges of, 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 of bias because people don't necessarily always understand each other. But those things are falling away, you know. Right. Uh, I mean, I'm one of a handful of Muslim leaders inside of the party today. I'm an RNC surrogate. Um, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to focus on our communities. Mm-hmm. But demonizing people, whether it's because of politics, whether it's because of their faith, or whether it's because their lack of, um, or it's because of their pre- their preference of gender, isn't solving anything. Mm-hmm. All it's doing is pushing us further apart into these little silos where people can become depressed and that doesn't build america's future that is the type of stuff that we had in the cold war in the past and that's the type of stuff that we should be moving away from